okay now in the previous lecture like we have discussed about excretory system in different animals and the introduction of excretion we have discussed now this is the time we to need to discuss about our human excretory system this human excretory system since we human beings are all vertebrate and we all includes under chordates so we have discussed in the previous lecture also the now organ which is the main organ of excretory system in human beings or in chordates is glomerulus but the glomerulus is a part of nephron which is a functional unit of kidney the main human excretory system we human being have it includes one pair kidney one pair ureter one urinary bladder and urethra so this is our human excretory system now since we human being lives on land we are terrestrial animal actually but we need moderate amount of water to excrete out our waste form and our main excretory form is the metabolic nitrogenous waste form that is urea so our main metabolic nitrogenous waste form is urea so we are ureotelic animals because we need moderate amount of water for excretion of urea similar there are another types of animals a monotelic in the previous lecture also we have discussed about it a monotelic animals excrete out ammonia but since ammonia need more amount of water to remove out so monotelic animals are generally aquatic animal as well as amphibians but they are young ones that is tadpoles secrete out or excrete out ammonia as their metabolic waste when they lives in water but when they lives on land they excrete out urea another type of animals are uricotelic animals these excrete out uric acid so like in the previous lecture we have discussed that uricotelic animal excrete out uric acid which need which need not need much amount of water so this type of animal or this type of excretory waste release out in certain terrestrial animal like reptiles and especially birds all birds secrete out or excrete out uric acid that means a dry form of excretory waste now here is the main point of human excretory system who which are secreting or excreted out the urea as their main nitrogenous metabolic waste form so to excrete out this urea we need this excretory system that is kidney ureter urinary bladder and the urethra now let's draw the diagram of our whole human excretory system now this is one pair kidney this is actually the right kidney this is our left kidney 
So we have two kidneys, that means one pair kidney, then this is ureter. We have two ureter, that means one pair ureter, right and left ureter. Then this is our urinary bladder, a conical shape like structure or triangular shape like structure, body known as urinary bladder. And from bladder, the extension of its tube like structure known as urethra. And the opening is known as urethral aperture. Right? Now, basically, the if we talk about the location of these kidney or our whole excretory system is, it is present on our dorsal side. That means in this particular part. Right? So, the kidney which are present, it's present in the dorsal right? one on each of side of the vertebral column. Now here, if we're talking about the right kidney and the left kidney, this right kidney somewhat seems to be lower than the left kidney. Why? Because just above the right kidney, we have liver as the organ present over it. So that is why the right kidney is located slightly lower than the left kidney. Now, this is the main part where the formation of urine takes place and where the metabolic waste which has which is being producing in our system converted in the urine form and this urine then outside or uh, move out of the kidney into these tube like structure known as ureter and this ureter when then transfer the urine into this a uh, bag like structure known as urinary bladder so urinary bladder basically stores the urine for some time or for some duration and then they release out the urine through urethra. Now let's discuss one by one in detail. Links kidney. Let's discuss about the kidney as in our kidney part. Okay, now here, this is the structure of kidney, which we have drawn here. This is the final internal anatomical structure of kidney. Here, what we are seeing is that in the kidney, which is bean shape or bean shape means, uh, which is the seed, the shape of seed is it is of this kidney inside which the ureter is entering. This ureter, when it enters inside the kidney, this place from where this ureter enter and this is the place also, also from where this renal artery and renal vein is entering into the kidney is known as hilum. Now when this ureter enters into the kidney part, it divides into further branches. That is the main branch is known as major calyx and when this major calyx divides into further minor branches known as minor calyx. Now, whenever the ureter enters into the kidney, the broadened part or broadened area of this ureter is known as pelvis. Now, what is we are observing here? This, this kidney is divided into two main regions. Peripheral region is known as cortex, which is darkened because of the presence of several nephrons in it. Here, so many nephrons present in the cortex region. That is the functional or structural unit of kidney. And this medullary part is only having particular tubules part of nephron. That means it is the lighter region. Now what we are observing here, this medulla region where the ureter or the pelvis part you can say divides into further branches. Due to these branches, basically what happened, the cortex part, this cortex part actually uh, it gets invaginated in the form of certain column. So, this is known as column of Bertini. This is known as column of Bertini. Fine. This column which has been formed due to formation of the pyramids, 
that means the medulla also projects out in the form of pyramids known as medullary pyramids these are medullary pyramids now these medullary pyramids which formed due to extension of medullary region only due to extension of this medullary region cortex region also has been invaginated in this in between their extension and that invaginated sections of cortex this section this invaginated sections of cortex is known as column of bertani now this kidney is covered by a wall or a capsule like structure known as renal capsule this renal capsule provide protection to the kidney because just over the renal capsule we also have another type of uh, layer known as adipose tissue adipose fats again providing it protection extra protection and since these capsule is providing protection to the kidney because inside the kidney we have the removal of metabolic waste is going on so this is the overall structure or you can say the inside structure of kidney only this kidney again i am talking about this kidney the cavity of the kidney divide into two separate region outer peripheral cortex and the central medullary region this is central medullary part which is lighter and cortex is the darker part because cortex contain the major part of nephron in its part a nephron is a functional and structural unit of kidney where actually the urine formation takes place now the centrally medulla part it has the medullary region divides into certain projection that is known as medullary pyramid this medullary pyramid have one end broaden and its another end is very short or you can say uh, it's conical in shape this medullary pyramid it opens in a particular point in the branch known as renal papilla this is known as renal papilla at which the medullary pyramid gets opened up now here the ureter when is entering inside the kidney the place from where the ureter is enter is known as hilum and this is the place only from where the urinal artery is entering and renal vein is ex uh, is exiting out the blood after removal of metabolic waste this ureter when it enters it broadens into a structure known as pelvis and this pelvis is again dividing into a major branch known as major calyx which is again dividing into further the minor branches known as minor calyx and in between these minor calyx the medullary part form a conical extension known as medullary pyramid this medullary pyramid opens at a point is known as renal papilla so whenever this urine forms in the nephron that urine comes to the or urine opens at this renal papilla and then that urine passes to the pelvis which then passes to the ureter so ureter is a tube like structure originate from kidney only and this carries the urine to the urinary bladder so what is exactly urinary bladder is this urinary bladder part is having again the cap uh, wall then inside this urinary bladder we have another projection known as trigon again this is the fatty projection and just in this trigon the ureter opens into this trigon only which is present inside the urinary bladder so urinary bladder is a bag like structure inside which the urine collects for some times whatever the urine forms in the kidney and that means in the nephron that urine is going to collect for some times in this uh, inside this urinary bladder urinary bladder also having certain type of muscles inside it which is known as detressor muscles the detressor muscles are the muscles that is the smooth muscles again helps in its contraction and relaxation basically here the, there is no much contraction and relaxation takes place in uh, in the smooth muscles but it is helping again in order to store the amount of urine for a particular time period now whenever the urinary bladder gets completely filled with the urine this urinary bladder remain closed basically due to presence of certain types of 
valve or gate known as sphincter. This is internal sphincters present at the distal end of urinary bladder and this is external sphincters present inner to the internal sphincter or you can say it is present in the inner wall of the uh, urinary bladder only. So, this is the distal end of urinary bladder where the internal and external sphincter present. These sphincter remain closed until the urinary bladder gets completely filled with urine. Whatever the urine is forming inside the kidney, that urine when comes in the urinary bladder, it remains stored here for some time because these sphincter gets closed. But when this urinary bladder gets filled completely, the important sphincter that is internal sphincter which is involuntary in action. This sphincter is involuntary that means it is not under our control. This internal sphincter gets open up first and this external sphincter is voluntary in action. So, whenever this internal sphincter gets open up, we feel the urge for excreting out urine. That means we feel urge, we, we just feel to remove out urine, that is we feel urge for urination process or micturition process. The micturition process is the process of release of urine. So, whenever the internal sphincter gets open up and we will going to feel the urge for urination or micturition, then this external sphincter is under our control and because it is voluntary in action. So, whenever we want or we wish to release out urine, then only thus this external sphincter gets opened up. But again, I should say that this voluntary action is uh, present only for a particular or up to limited extent, right? Then it is very important and necessary to release out the urine. So, that time the external sphincter has to open up and then we follow the urination process. So, this sphincter is just helping in the control of urine through and this urethral opening that is aperture through which the urine release out. So, this is all about the urinary bladder in which the urine gets collected and whatever the urine is forming in the kidney, it comes to the ureter, then to the urinary bladder and then to the urethra. And this urethra help in the release of urine through this urethral aperture. So, this is the excretory, human excretory system basically which consists of one pair kidney, ureter, urinary bladder and urethra and this is we have discussed about the structure of kidney, internal structure of kidney inside which there are so many projections of cortex and medullary part since we have also discussed that where the, this nephron is located because this nephron is the exact structural and functional unit of kidney where actually the formation of urine takes place. Now, basically the inside the kidney, these are the two main blood vessel which carries the blood. Inside it, for example, renal artery carrying the oxygenated blood inside the kidney. This oxygenated blood reaches to the nephron where actually this oxygenated blood which contains certain metabolic waste that is urea and this has to be removed from the nephron, has to be removed from blood by the help of nephron. Then after, because in the whole process the oxygen is being utilized, so the blood now become deoxygenated and it enters into the renal vein but it does not contain metabolic waste because it has been removed out in the form of urine by the nephrons. So, the renal vein is now carrying that deoxygenated blood but do not or you can say but lack of metabolic waste and this return this blood back to the heart for oxygenation and then again the heart pumps that oxygenated blood without having any metabolic waste to whole body systems. So, in this manner the kidney actually works but now we will going to discuss in the next lecture about the structure of nephron and the functions of nephron. So, let us end with this lecture now and in the next lecture we will going to discuss the about the structure and functionality of nephron. Thank you.